tell my people their transgressions and the house of the man is more gorgeous than while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Many of y'all are sinners. Out here today, I'm not saying all of y'all are sinners, but many of y'all are sinners living a life of sin, dressing immodestly, drunkenness, lying, thieves. Look at the list. If you fall on this list, praise God. Amen. I can see she's been drinking. You know how the poison coming out of the, the mouth of a woman that's dressing immodestly? The Bible says that women should dress modestly. You know, it burdens me. It so is my heart right now because I look around and what I see is death. Death all around me. Because you're dead. One way or another, you're either dead in sin or you're dead to sin. Thank you. Question? You don't have to put it on the speaker. Have you, have you never sinned? I have sinned, yes. Mm-hmm. But you know it. But I don't, I don't live on in sin now. So the question was, have I ever sinned before? Yes, I've sinned. Any man that says he has not sinned, he's a liar. And the truth is not in him. So These guys, you can, you can actually talk to these guys right here. I'm going to continue on preaching. Okay. Sure. So what I, I see when I look around is death all around me. I see uh, th- there's two types of death. You can either die to sin or you can die in your sin. Jesus Christ has come to set us free from that sin. He's come to set us free from uh, being enslaved. We're no longer to be enslaved to that sin, but we are to be redeemed from that sin. Made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So if you're still living in sin, it's as simple as this, folks. Quit sinning. Stop sinning. That was the message that Jesus had. Jesus healed a lame man as He laid by the pool. He told him to pick up his mat and walk. And then later on, He caught up with this guy and He told him to go on and to sin no more, lest the worst thing come on him. And He's talking about that day of judgment. If you continue on in sin, a worse thing will come upon you. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Now, if you all was to reap those wages right now, I think that would change your mind about how you felt about sin. I think if someone was to drink too much and reach an inebriated state of intoxication and they were to drop dead in their sin, I think that many of you all would change your minds about sin. You all would want to turn from it. Well, though you don't see the wages of sin right now, you will one day see the wages of those sin. You will reap what you sow. Well, James 4, 4 says that if you are a friend of the world, you are at enmity with God. So if you're a friend of this world system, if you're a sinner, if you're living a life of sin, you are an enemy of God. You know, the thing about God is He is light. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is light, and in Him there is no darkness. He cannot have fellowship with the darkness. So if you claim to be a child of God, and you're living a life of sin, you're living in darkness. You can't go on living in darkness and have fellowship with Jesus Christ. God turns His back to sin. He cannot even look upon sin. It's repulsive to them. If you're living a life of sin, you're but a stench in God's nostrils. The Bible says if you try to attain righteousness in your own sight, that your righteousness is as filthy rags. And what the Bible is referring to right there is a menstrual rag. That's a menstrual rag covered in dripping menstrual blood. That is what your righteousness looks like apart from God, apart from Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not standing here today claiming uh, salvation based, uh, uh, works based salvation. I'm not saved by my works. I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that by grace we are saved through faith and not by works. Then any man can boast. But the same Bible says that faith without works is dead. So if you're trying to come to God 
and you're not doing good works, then you're, you have a dead faith. And that dead faith, you cannot receive the grace of Jesus Christ. You must repent and turn from your sin. That's the beginning step. To see that you're a filthy sinner in the sight of God. Amen. And He will strike you down on the day of judgment. You must turn from that wicked sin. You must repent. You see, one day we will all stand in God's courtroom. A, a courtroom of eternity where we will stand before God on the judgment seat and He's going to look through the Lamb's book of life and see if your name's written there. Oh, it's going to be there. And if your name is... It's going to be written there. Yes, it is. Okay. Your name will be there too. So you're born again, ma'am? I don't need that. Are you born again? I don't need that. Say my what? Are you born again? I was only born once. You was born once? Okay, well that's not born again, ma'am. No, I just told you I was not born again. Was then, you're, then, what, then you're not. Then you won't stand before God. You won't. You won't. You won't. Your name won't be in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh. Jesus Christ told Nicodemus in John chapter three, verse three, that unless a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom. This is speaking of men and women. Unless you're born again, that's right. And that's for something of a man, mankind. Are you saying you don't sin? I do not sin. It's to, you know, Jesus said to go and sin no more. Now, if you tell me that Jesus said to go and sin no more, was He saying, uh, would He tell me to go and sin no more if it were not possible? So if I show you my ass and you're going to tell me, is that sinning? Ma'am, I would not want to see your rear end. Please keep that to yourself. I'm a married man. and The Bible says that if you cause anyone to lust, anyone, the Bible says if you cause anyone to sin, it would be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast in the sea. Bring it on, baby. Bring it uh, on. You're not talking to me. You're talking to God. God, bring it on. Don't bring it on. You mock now, but you're going to be screaming in eternity. In eternity. That's right. Uh, now, I was a sinner just like you. Were you? I was a sinner. Yes, I was. I was a drunken. I was an alcoholic. I was into pornography. A whoremonger. Yes, a whoremonger. I did naughty things with women. But I was born again. I repented. Until you come to God with a repentant heart, He's not going to hear your prayers. You can come and you can ask for forgiveness. And many of y'all, I believe, are drinking tonight. Hell yeah, we are. And you're out the drink. No, thank you, ma'am. I don't need to see that. I'm a married man. That's right. Keep your baby bottles in your shirt. But the Bible says that he who sins is of the devil. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. You do have to repent. Yes, sir. I did. I did repent. Once you repent, sir, you shouldn't have to keep going on and doing it. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That is for those that have repented and put their trust in Jesus Christ. He forgives us if we fall short. That's right. You find them all over the church today. Them limp wristed pastors that want to preach nothing but the love of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalms 5.5, people, that God hates those that work iniquity. How many, how many of y'all have heard that? No, I'm not a Pharisee. No, I've been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm not here. I didn't just clean up the outside. And hates in the Bible. Psalms 5.5. Read your Bible, sir. Psalms 5.5. God hates those that work iniquity. He's the same God now as He was in the Old Testament. He hates those that work iniquity. If you're living a life of sin, God is not only displeased with it, God hates you. You need to repent of that sin. That's right. Psalms 7.11 says that God is angry. He's angry with the wicked every day. One day you will stand before Him on the day of judgment and He will cast you into outer darkness unless you repent from that sin and turn to Jesus Christ. Put your trust and faith in Him. I'm not saying, sir, that I'm here by good works. That's what Pharisees believe. Pharisees believe that if you clean up the outer container and you appear to be righteous unto men, that you would uh, that you would be right with God. I'm not talking about a, a, salva a works-based salvation. Mind you, I'm talking about a salvation-based works. That once you're saved, you can only be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Repentance in Him. Sanctification. Sanctification. Holiness. Set apart. You can't be sanctified. You're human, dude. You can be sanctified. The Bible tells us to be sanctified. The Bible says to be holy as He is holy. That we are to be perfect as God is perfect. Now, Jesus would not have told us these things if it were not so. 
That's a human being. I strive to be perfect, sir. I strive to be perfect because that's what God has called me to do. I strive to be holy just as He is holy. I strive to be great But I would be sinning right now if I told you that I did not sin. Okay. You've asked for forgiveness. But why do you continue on sinning? You don't do it consciously. You, so you're not out here getting drunk consciously? I'm not saying you're drinking. I know you're not. I, I'm not necessarily speaking about you, but some of these folks are out here drinking, and that's not a conscious decision. Is it a sin to drink? Do I believe that? Drunkenness. Drunkenness is a sin. Yes. Yes. That's all right. They can go on down the road. You ought to count it, count it a blessing that God has sent you here to hear the man of God preach the Word today. Many of y'all ain't going to hear it in church on Sunday because you've got these limp wristed pastors that want to preach tolerance and they, they don't want to turn you away from the congregation. Their church pews would be empty. But they don't want to preach the truth of the Word of God. They want to cover it up with a lie. The Bible says that in the end times that men will heap unto themselves false teachers which preach a, a, a message that tickles their ears. And that's what the, the false, that's what the church is happening today in the church. Is there's false teachers and there's prophets and pastors that are preaching a false gospel. Many of y'all have heard about the, the, the gospel of prosperity. That's a false gospel. Folks, they're, they're searching after riches and they're claiming that you can get rich through Jesus Christ. The name it, claim it bunch. That's un, that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, I, I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I don't have a denomination. I am the church. I don't go to church. I am the church. I am the church. I am the church. We are the church. The church is not a building made with man's hands. The church is a body of believers. The church is the body of Jesus Christ. And we're doing exactly as Jesus called us to. In Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So the word preach, ladies and gentlemen, means uh, the, the Greek word for that is caruso. And that means to, uh, like a public crier, to go out and proclaim. So that's what we're here to do is to proclaim the gospel. Jesus, open air preacher. Jesus was the, one of the first open air preachers. Jesus stood here and told all these people and made all these people mad. You think making people mad is what you're supposed to do? Yeah, there you go. Noah. The Bible says that in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end. And Noah was an open air preacher. Noah, they thought he was crazy because he was building an ark. When there was no rain. And in the days of Noah, we're here to warn you that if you continue on in your sin, you will not receive eternal life. You must turn from your sin and repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ. Now many would mock, many would laugh, many would scorn the man of God. But we are called to do this, and we're called to do it. We do it in love. We do it because we care for those. When I look at you guys, I don't see. I see. I, I look in love. I look with care because what I see is myself one year ago. One year ago, I was an alcoholic, and I was at the bottom of my rope. And then some of y'all are still hooked on the bottle. What you need to do is put down the bottle and pick up the Bible. You all, you're, you're blessed because you live in the Bible Belt of America. You live in the Bible Belt. No, thank you, ma'am. No, no. I don't need none of that. What's up, brother? How you doing? So the, you guys live in the Bible Belt. That's a blessing because you guys have the opportunity to hear the good news. This same message that's being, being preached is, is not able to be preached all over the world without persecution, without uh, being beheaded for their faith. But you've received the gospel today. You're hearing the gospel message that you can turn and repent. You can turn from your sin and will repent. Sir, I'm trying to preach right now. I don't, I don't shake with sinners anyway. But what I see is... 
perspective, brothers and sisters. I see, I see, I see, sir, you're smoking right now. Smoking is a sin. It's what comes out of your heart, not what you put into it. That's right, that's right. But it also, the Bible says that your body's a temple, and anyone that destroys that temple, God will destroy. You're destroying yourself by putting in that inhalant. It's what comes out of your heart, man, not what you put into it. Right, right. But at the same time, you're destroying your body by smoking, doing something. God created your body. And you're smoking. God created cigarettes too, didn't he? No, God did not create cigarettes. God created poison ivy. Why don't you huff on some of that? I fucking got poison ivy. So, the, so I see a bunch of prospective brothers and sisters here. I see, I see one individual that was here last week with us, and he walked up and down the streets. That's a prospective brother or sister in Christ. Something has compelled him to come back and hear the word again. And many of y'all are compelled to stick around and hear the message when you could be moving on your way, but you want to hear the word because God has put it on your heart. The Holy Spirit has drawn you in. Count it a blessing the day that you can receive the word of God. See, I receive the word of God in a church that isn't hateful towards me or my family. Any church that... Uh, they, they preach love and tolerance. Are they open to homosexuals? They do the neck and horse. See, any church that's open to homosexuality is not a church at all. Because there's no such thing as a homosexual Christian. Jesus is not open to people. So you guys, you guys will go into the church because it's open. It's open to everybody. But Jesus, he's not entering in. Because he doesn't have fellowship with the darkness. So, you know what? The church is a body of believers. It's not a building of four walls made by the hands of men. The naked horse story. I don't, I don't know about the... Where are you calling all the girls naked horse? The the no, I, I really don't... Well, do that. Now, the women do need to dress modestly. That's right. Women need to dress modestly. If you're dressing immodestly, there's a couple of things going on, ladies. The Bible says that you should dress modestly. That you should... Modestly, you should cover yourself. The thing is, you need to walk with dignity. You need to dress yourselves and have some dignity. If men look at you for your dignity and not for your cleavage. Many of y'all are leading men astray. You're leading them into lust. You're causing them to lust after you. The Bible says that if you do these things, if you cause anyone to sin, that it would be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the sea. That's a bad thing. You're causing people to sin. And men likewise. A bunch of whoremongers walking around following these young ladies that are not dressed modestly. The Bible says Jesus Himself said on the Sermon of Mount, Jesus, the open air preacher, when He preached upon the Sermon of the Mount and He preached out in the open and He called out to Him, He said in Matthew 5.27 that many of you have heard it said that you shall not commit adultery. What religion is this? But Jesus went on to say that I say unto you that if you look upon a woman in lust, then you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. It's that simple, people. It's that simple. That if you look upon a woman in lust, you've committed adultery with her. God is looking at your heart. That's where sin is birthed. That's where uh, sin is birthed and comes forth. It's what's in a man's heart that makes him unclean. I, I was accused of being a Pharisee earlier. I'm, I didn't clean myself up on the outside to uh, impress you people. I didn't, I'm not worried about that. I'm not out to impress you anyway. There's one person I'm concerned about pleasing, and that is God. Hebrews 11.6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those that come to Him must first be a, uh, believe that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. So what you need to do is to clean up the inside. You know, I'm not worried about the outside. I'm worried about cleaning up the inside, clean up that heart, clean up that sin condition. But it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that He washes away that sin condition. You can't do it in the onset. Please don't touch me, sir. But if you are a homosexual, sir, then uh, you need to repent before you die and go to hell. Oh, I'm hyped for hell if all the lesbians are there. It's going to be great. That's the problem with these open churches. These come-as-you-are churches. You can just come any way you want. 
That's the problem with the church is they've not taught. They've not preached the true gospel that you must repent. First came John the Baptist who said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He seen Jesus coming. He knew that was the Lamb of God. He preached repentance. He said to repent and turn from your sins. Jesus, upon being baptized, He came up out of the Jordan River and He went forth and Jesus preached repentance. That was His first message. He was preaching the same thing we're preaching here today. You call us hateful for preaching repentance. You need to read your Bible and get an idea of who Jesus Christ is. He came preaching repentance. It says in the Bible, he said to go and sin no more. It says in the Bible you can't cut your hair. What does he say about but obviously For women. Women. I am judging. I'm judging a righteous judgment. John's, John's, no, John 7, 24 said that to judge a righteous judgment. 1 Corinthians 2.15 Paul told us that a righteous man judges all things but can be rightly judged by no man. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I was a sinner just the same. But you know what? I know where the light is. I know the light. I know Jesus Christ. You all need to come to the light. Come out of the darkness. The problem is, is you all choose to live in the darkness because you love the darkness. You hate the light because you would rather dwell in the darkness. Sin is pleasurable for a season, is it not? My judgment is a right judgment. My judgment is a right judgment and be certain of this, that God is not going to be near as kind and compassionate on that day. God, the Bible says that by their fruit we will know them. By their fruit. The Bible says that he who sins is of the devil. They're not a child of God, they're a child of the devil. All of you are wearing mixed fabrics. All of you have cut your hair and that's what the Bible says. That's shellfish. Yeah, that's Levitical law. That's before the cross. Okay. We're not Jewish. We're not saved by the law. Jesus, he summed it all up with two laws. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your understanding. And, and all your spirit, it, all your strength. Where does it say? And love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. I'm loving my neighbor today. I'm here to preach the gospel, the good news to you, because I don't want to see you die in your sins and go to hell. See, I love my neighbor. I was in the same boat you all was in. Oh, you were gay? Are you gay? Yeah. Then you need to repent. Yes, 1 Corinthians 6 9. First, it's, it's probably up here, too. I mean, I'm pretty sure my. 1 Corinthians 6 9 says that be not deceived that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. For neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor drunkards, nor homosexuals, nor liars, nor thieves, nor covetous will inherit the kingdom of God. What is these pastors preaching to y'all on Sunday morning? What are they preaching? How many Christians do I have out here? Anybody? Anybody that's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus? There we go. What are the preachers preaching to y'all? Romans, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. If many of y'all are lukewarm. You're living in sin. You're lukewarm Christians. I'm doing exactly as Jesus called me to do. That's to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. That's all right. You know, I don't take my instructions from women. I take my instructions from Jesus Christ. The Bible says that a woman should keep her silence and learn from her husband at home. That's right. A woman should keep her silence. Some of y'all just need to read the Word of God and talk to your husbands at home. not my opinion, ma'am. This is the Word of God. If y'all are reading the... If, if you, some of y'all are reading the book of opinions. That's, that's not in this Bible. That's not in this Bible. 
Point out in your Bible, pull up right now where it says homosexuals will be damned. How come? How right now. I have never heard you. One of y'all want to show that? First Corinthians 6 9. She wants to see it. We do, we do, we do offline. We can pray offline. Condemn everybody. We can pray offline. We can if you want to pray, I'll pray with you all online. Everybody that walks by, you don't know me. No, I'm not I'm not condemning it. I'm, this guy is saying I'm condemning everybody. You know the the thing is is the Bible says Many of y'all have heard John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him that shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, you should go on and read the next few verses. For God so loved the world that He He said He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He said He didn't come to condemn because y'all condemn yourselves. He says that you have condemned yourselves. He is the light. Read the rest of John chapter 3. It says He is the light and there is no darkness. He says that you choose to not to come to the light because you love the darkness. Many of y'all are loving your sin. You're living for the moment. Some of y'all just want to get drunk, you want to get high, and you want to get laid. And see, that's sin. And that sin will lead to death. You're proud now, but you know what? God gives grace to the humble and He opposes the proud. Pride comes before a fall. How many fornicators do I have out here today? I bet there's all kinds of fornicators. You know what? 100% chance you have an STD. If you're a fornicator, you have an STD. 10 out of 10 fornicators have STDs. Sexually transmitted damnation. The Bible says that no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God. Can I ask you something? Okay, God says thou shalt not judge, but you're out here judging every motherfucker in this street. Man, you got it. You, you need to watch your mouth, man. There may be ladies present. There may be ladies present. You need to read the Bible. John 7, 24, Jesus tells us to judge a righteous judgment. He actually tells us to judge. So that way you all know you're living in sin. When I walked by earlier, one of your guys said, you're a sinner. You don't know me. I'm not a sinner. I'm a preacher's kid. I go to church every Sunday. I take my kids. I'm a okay. Christian. How am I a sinner? Okay. I, you see a beer in my hand? You see sir, he's, he's speaking in general. He's not accusing everyone of being a sinner. You don't get me wrong. I'm not accusing. I said earlier that I'm not saying and everyone here is a sinner. Many of y'all are sinners. Some of y'all... But I want to ask you, why are you out here walking in the streets and living in this worldliness? You just lied, so that makes you just sin. No. No, I said earlier. You better repent. So many of y'all are living in sin. I don't want you to go on living in sin. I want you to come to the light. Live in righteousness. The Bible says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be born again? That's a spiritual rebirth, ladies and gentlemen. A spiritual rebirth. You must lay down that life. The Bible says that you're either dead in your sin or you're dead to sin. If you're dead to sin, you're alive in Christ Jesus. You need to bury yourself with Jesus Christ, dead to sin, raise up again unto righteousness and live a life that's holy, sanctified. Jesus said in His Word that we are to be holy as He is holy. He said to be perfect as His Father is perfect. He said to go and sin no more. Even when the uh, lady that was committed, uh, caught in the act of adultery was brought to Him. They tried to, they tried to trip Jesus up. They wanted uh, to cast stones at her. Jesus didn't hang out with him. He hung out with him just like we're hanging out with you today. He did not condemn her. He healed her. She could, that's right. And healed her. She was no. She didn't need healed. She she was adulterous. He said he said, does it no one condemn you? And she said no no sir no Lord not one. And he said well neither do I condemn you. So go forth and sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more. It's that simple, folks. To go forth and sin no more. To repent. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Turn from that sin. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Live righteously unto Him. Be holy as He is holy. Hey, I do it all. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Hey, you need to repent. 
Okay? Or hell fire. Ready to go. No, you'll see me. You, you, uh, you'll be there to give an account of why. I hope you don't. I hope you don't. I hope. I hope you repent before that time, man. I pray that you repent before that time. Five off. There we go. Thank you. So I'm not here because I care. I'm not here because I care. All I see is uh, drunkenness, revelry, uh, uh, lust, men that are walking around, uh, whoremongers, uh, women that are dressed like whores walking around. They need to dress modestly. You want to back out with me? No, sir, I'm not a homosexual. my people their transgression and the house of Jacob is